Good afternoon guys and welcome to today's vlog. It is a Saturday, it's our usual vlog day. Today we are in the suburb town area of Norfolk which is sets the scene for the final resting place of our main character of today's story. It's a fascinating story. It goes alongside with an old folklore from the town where it originates and it should come across as quite humbling. It's, it's a really peculiar story. Um, it's going to be good. Um, I'll set the scene here, show you where his final resting place is, and then we'll go up into the woods of the Ashridge estate to sort of set the scene for the story itself. Hope you enjoy, guys. Let's do this. Right, so this is St Mary's Church. We're in the southern tip of Norfolk, which is adjacent to Burke Hampstead. It's brick like where we live in Bletchley. It's now classed pretty much as Milton Keynes, with us being, I suppose you can guess you can call it a suburb within. So Norfolk is pretty much classed the same within Burke Hampstead. This church is St Mary's. I'm not here specifically to see the church. It's an actual grave I'm searching for. I can actually see it in my right eye now as I'm looking but it's significant and it goes with today's story. You hear the beautiful church bells in the background. This is the grave in question. It is the grave of Peter the Wild Boy. He died in, I believe it's 1785. And today's story is pretty much based around him it's a unique story for sure. This is a beautiful, peaceful surroundings where his final resting place is. Beautiful stained glass windows. Have a look around the churchyard just before we start the story. Peaceful and tranquil out here, not many people about. This is a very old grave now, it's grade two listing so it can never be taken away. And people still come here to this day to pay tribute to the man that was then the boy Peter the Wild Boy. The proximity of where we are, I said Burke Hampstead, Decorum, Hertfordshire. We have Burke Hampstead, the town itself, to the left of us as we're walking. To the right is the old town of Norfolk, which used to be bigger than Burke Hampstead itself, but as times have changed, Burke Hampstead itself has swallowed this area. There's a beautiful old Tudor house right there. It truly is like saying X marks the spot. There's a plane to go over. This otherwise very peaceful area. It is those tales from beyond the grave that we sometimes take very little notice of but sometimes in reality they can be extraordinary deeply fascinating intriguing etc this one exceptionally no exception to the rule the legend that goes with it from the same area and the guy himself it's so bizarre so quirky but it all happened and it's real it's documented and as I go up into the woods of the Ashridge estate and tell the story, hopefully it give a better understanding of who he was. So, let's make our way out of here now, out of the churchyard. Now to the left of where I am, if I go down in that direction, um, 
I'm not going to because the actual road it's very noisy so it's hard to tell that side of the story itself but further down there if you find a road called Castle Street I believe it is there is a boys school a boys prep school it's a privately owned school and on site there there is a collar like a dog's collar um, and that belonged to Peter it wasn't the car but it wasn't for that reason it was so if he got lost they could return him to safety because the guy himself was truly extraordinary but he couldn't talk he could barely walk but anyway let's tell his story you see what I mean about the noise I've only specifically crossed the road to show this Tudor building which is just before that period in time to be honest with you this is adjacent to St Mary's cemeteries in Norfolk but the era itself that we got to go back to is the Georgian times Okay, it's about setting the scene as we go through this woods itself, which is up in Ashridge, and we go deeper and deeper. It becomes a bit more like a fairy tale sort of scenic landscape, which is ironic because our tale, which is a true story, is set at an area where there is a significant urban myth and legend. The town itself is a place called Hamlin in Germany. Now, I don't know whether any of you have heard the story, the old fable, old folklore of the Pied Piper. The Pied Piper was from the Hamlin area. He went into the town. The town at that time was infested with a plague of rats. Now, he turned around and said, you pay him a sum of money, he will rid the town of its rats. So, they turned and agreed to this. He then proceeded to play his flute. The line of rats followed him out of Hamlin and they were gone. No more rats ever in the town. The problem happened is that the villagers and the town people did not pay the Pied Piper his money. And so he come back and he played his flute and all the children followed him out of the town and the village and they were never seen again. Now, why is that story so significant? It's not so much that, it's the fact that this story that I'm telling you is a, involves then a child named Peter. Well, he was named Peter by probably the court of King George I. This is an era of 1725, Georgian era, the age of enlightenment. Very lazy era for the names of kings, pretty much probably called the Georgian era because after George I, you had George II and then you had George III. But anyway, I digress. The reason why I'm setting the story with that, the Hamley and the Pied Piper, etc., is because Peter the Wild Boy was discovered on a hunting party by George the first and his group they went on hunting parties around the town of Hamlin and they found this boy on all fours and pretty much what you describe as being feral so he was of a scurried appearance he could not walk he was very disheveled could not talk and um, pretty much they believe there's a possibility that he would have been raised by either wolves or bears why the wolves or bears wouldn't have eaten him i don't know i suppose you just get included in the group if he was around at the time when there was baby wolves etc who knows but anyway king george the first and his group took hold of peter 
and they kept him and brought him back to the UK where he would stay with them at Kensington Palace and he had a fondness of Princess Caroline who was then the Princess of Wales he would play with her long opera gloves like a cat would with some string balls etc and also he had a fascination for pocket watches just sitting there for hours watching them tick on the 1700s Georgian era as I said also known as the Age of Enlightenment is also a time period in which Captain James Cook would explore New Zealand and Australia I think he was eaten I'm 100% sure but I get a fault that he might not have survived the trip um, then of course you've got the United States declare, declared independence from ourselves and it is the start of the Great British Industry Revolution that all happened in the Georgian era which is of course they call it the 18th century so it would have been 1701 to 1799 well, 99 yeah uh, reason for me specifically walking through these woods you think what's it got to do with the story well this is where Peter would see out his life he would come up here walk around he was supposed to be as I said collared the reason why he was collared was not for the act of keeping him as a pet which he was brought back to the UK as pretty much a pet stroke toy for the royal court which I find a bit disturbing to be honest with you but um, after a period of time the novelty factor wore off and they retired Peter up here to Norfolk to a local farmer I believe his name was Fen and after an incident of Peter going missing there was concerns that what would happen if he was to get lost and the guy himself not being able to talk and um, so they made a, a collar of I believe it was brown leather and bronze with his name stamped on and if he was found to be returned to the Fenn family I believe it was in Burke Hampstead so that is why we are here but the other reason why I'm here is to find something to discover something which I believe is still here from the Victorian era as we go further on if I can't find it I'll show you a picture if I can find it you'll discover it with me here today I might be kidding myself but that looks like an abandoned manor house in the woods strange there's no real true path to it everything's worn away and it looks as if it's sat there for a long time beautiful light fit into the outside and across the road adjacent to that is an old barn and this is an old road that very very rarely gets used the name of the place is Wood Yard, It'd be worth looking into one of the truly strange aspects of Peter is that for all the time that he'd come over to the UK after being captured in the woods in Germany he would never eat like he, uh, we would with knife and fork from a plate etc he would not eat hot food he would rather scurry around for berries and nuts etc flower and fauna sort of plants you could probably eat I don't know how they even work that out mushrooms, fungi, etc. And he would eat that naturally off the forest, the woody area floors. And for water and drink purposes, you would not get him to drink out of a cup, etc. He would drink from the pools of water that would settle among patches of leaves. That's how he would get his hydration. So, really weird that even after all that time he lived for 70 years so I think it makes him probably about 1785 his grave at St Mary's 
in Norfolk, in all that time, they could not change him, his mannerism. He could walk at the end, but he could not communicate with his own voice. And he would not take on substance the way we take for granted. I brought along a picture of what the collar looks like. They said it's on display in the boys prep school on Church Street in Burke Hampstead. So you follow that church, not Church Street, Castle Street, should I say. You follow that to the end of the road, you find the train station. And beyond that, you find Burke Hampstead Castle, where the likes of myself, pinned on places, etc., have frequented and told other stories. I now find myself in the vicinity of where I need to start my search. A lot of these trees, although they seem to have fauna on them, they're at the end of life apparently. So a lot of these could be sweet chestnuts in here amongst these. This whole area, this used to be called, I think it's Hodgkin's Rookery. We're adjacent to Ashridge House, which is now a college, I believe. And I believe around this area somewhere, there is a hole, a pit, which they would have kept fresh fish in and ice would form on that pit and they would collect that ice and keep it in what is known as an ice house now what is an ice house you'll probably be asking yourself an ice house is a victorian era so sort of this one was built if i find it around 1825 and it's like i said a fridge a freezer they would keep wine they would keep meats other foods cool in it and they're always in close proximity to the manor house itself not too far away because obviously they've got to go and get their produce so that's why we find ourselves here and i believe there's a possibility you could gain entrance to it and this one is supposed to be pretty unique most of them are just wells or pits but this one is more of a cellar. Now my very limited knowledge on the subject would certainly turn around and say this furrowed out area, which is quite wide and got a decent depth to it, could quite easily house your fresh fish if this was a large pond area. So that being said, and I'll show you on the map in a minute, we should be in the right area. I got the name of the guy wrong. It's not Hodgkins, it's Hardin's Rookery. Now if you look just up there, you can see the words Ice House. Now that blue area just above that, that is the pond area where we're standing now. This is a very ornate old map. So I can see straight ahead of that to the side of the college what looks like tennis courts and if i pan away from this and show you over there there is certainly tennis courts over there so i am saying in this area in front of me there is a distinctive possibly possibility i could find this house ice house you know what guys as strange as it may seem i think we found it Here's a picture which shows the ice house. In the foreground, there is one of those, I don't, I've never known what they are, like a wooden made up, what do they call it? It's not, is it a wigwam? Something like that. But look, right there, and that looks like a base or a top area to what could be the ice house. So hopefully, voila, as they say in France, that could be it. Let's go and investigate. Yep, that's certainly the roof area of it there. So I think if I come down the front area here, I should get a much clearer look of it. It's a bit boggy underfoot. Guys and girls, we have found ourselves the ice house. 
not something you see every day. They are, of course, scattered about all over the country, but not on the grand, spectacular view such as this. They're usually just a pit. But I'm just up here in the woods, and I've found this. That is stunning. Let's go and have a look inside. Okay. So we have an area that's made predominantly of flint and old rock. And then within that, there is a brick based area. Did bring a torch. This could have been like an old prison. Moss growing on the walls, an old gate, obviously padlocked for safety reasons. Now that there is basically like a well. Don't know how many feet that go down, possibly up to 35, 40 feet deep. You can hear the echo, of course. And we have the, the walls around the area itself. I've never seen anything like that. Looks like a winch there. So you could have possibly had a bucket on there to maybe keep things cool that you're lowering into that area. But wow, what a fascinating find. Not every day you come into the woods and you just find something in plain sight that is so unique. Have a further look outside of it. There's your grand entrance. And it's like living in a cave. Uh, yeah, I find this truly spectacular. Hope you guys do. As you might find cave spiders, other sort of bugs. It's obviously very damp in there. And also, the distinctive possibility, and why wouldn't it be, that you would have bats in here. Plenty of places for a bat to stay. Even a fox, I guess, could get through there and make a den. just to show you guys the proximity of where I am. The ice house, follow this pathway, you can see some people coming along in the distance over there. Just follow that trail, you'll come across a set of tennis courts to your left and to the right there's a dipped area and that's where the ice house is situated. But that is something truly magnificent over there. Not there to view that today, maybe at a later date if you can gain access because I believe that is now a college, but it used to be the Ashridge Estate House. So noblemen of a bygone era would frequent there. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that true story of Peter the Wild Boy, along with the folklore of the Pied Piper, etc. And especially finding that ice house. I know it's from totally something different One's the Georgian era, the story of the wild boy, and that being a predecessor to what we would commonly know as a fridge, although common man would not have had the money to have something like that. That is ridiculous. And you've just seen in the foreground the size of the estate and the building there. So I put that into perspective of how much money you would have needed back in the day to own one of those things. It's just phenomenal. Anyway, that's our stories done for today. I'm about to go and find Rach if I see anything on the way because these woods are frequented by red deer which are synonymous with Hertfordshire and um, yeah, go and catch up with Rach who decided not to come out on this little walk with us and decided to stay up by the Bridgewater Monument and grab herself a caffeinated beverage. So, let's generally walk along. 
squirrels having a bit of a scrap. In previous times of walking around this estate area, we've come across some truly fascinating sites. Things that are mapped out, so you could come along with your family. I think they asked for a, a donation. You don't have to pay to park. It's like a, just a donation box at the end. And I believe it's something like £1.50 maybe 250 but there is a cafeteria there there are public toilets you've got the Bridgewater monument there which is quite an achievement to scale to the top of that and you've got the obelisk at the top there which shows out and it's got like little silhouettes of what you can see in the distance I believe you can see as far as London from here um, also in this area which is truly fascinating there is what used to be an old hunting lodge um, it became what they call a cabin I think the scouts used it in later years but it was left abandoned for some years and then it was used significantly as a film location for the film The Descent you know when they go through and they find these demonic creatures living in the dark a group of caving girls who get together after a tragic accident meet together after a year and go and investigate that and then it's a battle of survival that was filmed in the cabin which is on this estate i vlogged it before so if you look some back in my other vlogs and you'll see it i think it's written down i don't know if there's there might actually be a picture of the the cabin itself in the vlog but that's worth a look for sure just shows you what's out there for free Rach just decided to sit back and have a coffee and wait for me while I end the vlog. So just thought I'd show you, you can gain access to the monument because it is open today. There are people up the top there. I'm not doing that. I'm going to end this vlog by going to the location of the film, The Cabin in the Woods, with the descent. So let's go and have a look at that and end this. Just shows you guys that if you've got a mobility scooter, you can still access this site. Right, so just a seven minute walk from the Bridgewater Monument itself is this significant location. I said it used to be an old hunting lodge turned into a log cabin and it is the destination that was pretty much used for the descent in the movie. The girls, I can't remember, maybe six girls. There is a film shot of them and they're all standing along the veranda bit of the front here. I believe there's supposed to be cave area that comes from behind it. They go down into the caves. Um, someone loses their footing, falls down, and then it's like a battle of survival with these demonic creatures that never see the light of day. I can't remember what they're called, but they've got teeth on them like sharks. They're razor sharp. The color of them is pretty much as if they're albino. They've got bright blue eyes and not hair on their body. And... It becomes a challenge for the girls to try and survive and get out. And I think they've done a couple of movies. I think the second movie, one of the girls that survives goes back to it. So it is a fascinating horror movie. Obviously filmed here and in Scotland as opposed to, I think it was supposed to be set in the Appalachian Mountains. But I thought, you know what, instead of just turning around and saying about I've done vlogs like this before, this shows you what else is in the proximity of where I've been walking today. So I've given you the story of Peter the Wild Boy. The history behind the ice houses, which is adjacent to Ashridge Estate itself. And this here, which is the abandoned film location of the film The Descent. So I hope you've enjoyed it. They have got a perimeter fence around the outside, but it doesn't stop you really gaining access to the site there's nothing much in there now i think there could be a couple of old chairs the old chimney stack on the outside which obviously goes through it you probably could get access via the underneath but why would you want to it's just something that's pretty cool that sits there and this is the not the back side of water but the back side of the cabin You know what? 
if you had some serious money and you could do that up that'd be quite a nice place to live anyway guys thank you very much for watching i appreciate your time today the stories are true themselves that I've presented to you. Obviously, it had the fable, the old folklore tale with the Pied Piper. That was just to set the location because they were both based originally in Hamlin before Peter the Wild Boy was taken by George I over to here to Kensington Palace. And as I told you the story, he lived for a good 70 years before he was laid to rest at that St Mary's Church in Norfolk, which is just on the northern tip of Berkhampstead itself and these woods he used to frequent which brought me up here in the first place it also gave me a chance to find that ice house which if you do your urban stuff your your urbex as well it's quite cool I've never seen anything like that before I've seen ice holes but not actually what appeared to be a cellar with a pit at the back so I enjoyed that hope you did too and then to finish with these guys just to show you what was here the actual film location so thank you very much for watching enjoy the rest of your weekend i'll see you in movies bye for now and as with me as usual i'm always on the lookout for something that might tell a story anyone got any ideas there possibly future views of witches mothman prophecies etc if they're out there and there's any element of truth to them I'll certainly bring them to you. Bye for now, guys. Bye for now. Not really a challenge I fancy, but some of you adventurers out there would love that. I guess it's like a leap of faith. <laughs>